had some negotiations that just concluded in, in Germany, I think it was last week, was it? Last week, where text, a draft text was presented. So one of the reasons for, for coming here is to do a review of this text and, and see whether our concerns have been reflected in the text that will form the basis of the new agreement that will be signed in Paris. We also have some meetings coming up, some very important meetings. There's a CELAC meeting of um, meeting of ministers of the environment and external affairs of Latin America and the Caribbean. That takes place in Ecuador, I think, um, next week. There is a third informal ministerial slash pre-COP that takes place in Paris under the presidency of, um, under the chairmanship of the incoming president of the COP, foreign minister of France, Mr. Laura Fabius, and that takes place in Paris from the 8th to the 10th. And there is a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Trogham, in Malta from the 27th to the 29th of November. So at all of these meetings and a few others, climate change issues will be discussed. So we want to make sure that everyone is, is speaking with the same voice, our foreign ministers, our heads of government, and, and any of the other ministers. There's also a UNESCO meeting coming up um, in, in Paris, and I know climate change is on the agenda there. So these are all reasons that we have to ensure that we are coordinated and, and, and saying the same thing with climate change. Is concerned. Yes, we have been having significant interactions with the Americans in the negotiations and also in bilaterals with the U.S. Special Envoy on Climate Change. And there are some issues where they are, I think, agreeing with us. And there are some areas where there is significant divergence. As with all negotiations, it's a matter of, of trying to arrive at some consensus. Secondly, that we can limit the long-term temperature increase of our planet to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of this century, because we've always said that 1.5 degrees Celsius is a threshold for small island developing states. In fact, you will see that everyone in this room is wearing a 1.5 to stay alive pin. And we were all pinned this morning by the St. Lucia chapter of the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, who have adopted this slogan and made it their own to ensure that they, they galvanize youth and get youth mobilized in an issue which is probably even more important for them than it is for us, because this really speaks to the kind of planet that we leave behind for them to enjoy. Um, also, the question of finance, which, which both Dr. Trotz and, and Mr. Charles just spoke of, ensuring that we have access to finance for climate change adaptation so that we can take the necessary steps to, to, to address some pressing issues, for example, the water sector. You know that the Caribbean is going through one of its worst droughts in the last five to 10 years. And all of the climate change modeling data are suggesting that we can see anywhere between a 10 and 20% reduction in water availability as a result of climate change. So that's one of the areas that we will have to adapt. Um, sea level rise, the issue of loss and damage from the irreversible um, losses that, that we, we encounter, bleaching of your corals, um, ocean acidification, sea level rise. So there are many issues that are peculiar to small island developing states. And, and our goal really is to ensure that these issues are not lost in the negotiations, that our interests are not subservient to those of others. One of the criticisms of our region has always been that we are not coordinated, that we don't, we don't work together, that we do, we do things in a disparate manner, and, and our regional institutions are not working and they're failing us. Well, you have the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, the five C's here. You have the CARICOM Secretariat here. You have the OECS Commission represented here. And they all, you have the, um, and you, you also have other institutions that are working together with us, like the Caribbean Development Bank. So you have regional institutions working with countries. And you also have, you spoke about Martinique, but you have the, the Minister of, of the Environment from Haiti, who's here, and his, his technical officer. So you have the Caribbean uniting to deal with climate change. And I think that is something that the people of the region can take a significant amount of comfort from. Because it, it suggests that, one, the negotiators are working together and doing their, their best to ensure that we get the best possible agreement in Paris. But even more importantly, that there is very good coordination and very good synergy between the efforts of the negotiators and the efforts of the political directorate to ensure that there is good representation at all levels and that the interests of the Caribbean, the interests of small island developing states and low-lying countries in the Caribbean, and we're not just negotiating for the Caribbean, we're also negotiating for countries like Kiribati and the Maldives and 
and, and, and um, Seychelles and, and other countries within the AOSIS region, we're all working very closely together and they are as protective of our interests as we are of theirs. And I think what the region needs to take comfort from is that you have a very tight, cohesive, very um, focused group of people working. And what I'm very encouraged by is the fact that you have young people in our Caribbean Youth Environment Network, not just in St. Lucia, but in all of the countries in the Caribbean who are engaged and who are raising their voices and asking for, for action. You have Panos Caribbean that has joined with us and, and working with artists and working with, with media personnel like yourselves to ensure that everyone is part of this fight. It has helped us that we're going through one of the hottest years in the history of our planet, so maybe that is helping to galvanize action even more. And there is no stronger message that can be sent out to the Caribbean region than the fact that you have a united Caribbean dealing with climate change.